right in the middle of this transition between Nebuchadnezzar's command and the three Hebrews being accused of not respecting the king. Mm. And now they're being gathered and taken into the king, and the king is going to start talking to them. Right now, the king is kind of in disbelief. Mm. And we're going to pick up his spirit and his attitude as we get into verse 14. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to see here in verses 14 and onward of Daniel chapter 3 is the intensity of anger and animosity that comes from the king to these three young men. And what that's going to say to us and speak to us is that there's going to be times when we're going to be feeling intense heat and trial and difficulty and challenge from people, from human beings who may misunderstand us, who may feel disrespected, who may feel like, you know, we're not doing things we should be doing for society at large. And how do we respond? How do we, what are we going to, what are we going to do in that kind of a situation? So these three Hebrews are going to instruct us and help us to understand how to navigate those difficult situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we should start with a word of prayer. Ivan, yep. would you like to pray for Let's us? Pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, guide us as we continue to go through the book of Daniel, Lord. Please give us uh, insight, give us wisdom, and above all, Lord, we pray for those who are watching yes. that uh, as they watch, Lord, they, uh, their hearts will be moved, their minds will be um, uh, made up to firmly uh, uh, to decide firmly to follow you, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, just bless us now as we get into this study. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, Daniel chapter three. Jason, do you want to get get reading for us in verses fourteen, and let's go all the way to verse eighteen. Okay. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> spoke, saying to them. Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, uh, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O, o Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. <laughs> wow, he said that to the king. <laughs> if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. There's some tension in the air yes. right here. Yeah. As you can For see, sure. each one is playing off the other one. Yeah. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and the, the tension goes up. Yeah. What I think is really interesting here is Nebuchadnezzar has already been told that they haven't worshipped and bowed down, but mm -hmm. he can't believe it. Mm -hmm. He just can't believe it. Mm -hmm. Is it true? Mm -hmm. And the reason why he can't believe it is because he is himself filled with fear about his future. Mm. It's uncertain to him. He has this dream that he already, in Daniel chapter 2, the dream of the, the image that he already um, affirmed was true, was from the God of heaven, and this is true, and your God is the God of gods. But that image ended the, the kingdom of Babylon at the head. Right. And so the golden head was telling him in this image that he affirmed that his kingdom was coming to an end. And he did, he just, that just scared him. Mm. And so the reason why he makes the image all of gold is because he's trying to send a message to everyone and he invites everyone to come. Mm. Everyone, high and low. Because, you know, kingdoms usually end because of some kind of conspiracy, there's some kind of mm. group of mm. people over in this part of the, your territory or that part of the territory. They're going to come together and they're going to try and plan some kind of coup or some kind of overthrow. They're going to build an army. And so he's going to say, okay, I want all the representatives, I want you all to come here. Mm. Mm -hmm. I want you to worship this image that's gold all the way down. Mm -hmm. and, and the message he's sending is, my kingdom is not going to come to an end. So don't you try to conspire. and Don't you try to... And then he's got three guys at the head of his personal government mm -hmm. who aren't bowing down. What is that telling him? Conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Ooh, man, we can't have this. Mm -hmm. Is it true? I put you guys, for Daniel's sake, in the highest positions. Mm -hmm. And you're not bowing down. Hmm. Is it true? And the other reason why he's really struggling with this, I think, is because he knows that the reason why those people are bowing down is because they're afraid to go into the furnace. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And now he's meeting three guys who aren't afraid to go into the furnace. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he wants to reiterate this because he wants to make sure they understand that this isn't about conspiracy necessarily. This is about you're going to live or you're going to die right in this moment. Mm -hmm. And surely that's going to put the fear of me in you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And what happens at that point when he realizes that they're not afraid, he loses it. Yeah. He absolutely loses it. He's like, I can't believe that I'm yeah. dealing with three guys that aren't afraid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to... Um, add a, a dimension to this that brings it down to not just us personally, but in a prophetic sense. Mm. I want to read uh, Revelation 13, mm -hmm. which is literally the parallel to what we just read in Daniel chapter mm. 3. Mm -hmm. Revelation 13 verse 15. Revelation 13 verse 14 actually. The Bible says, um, um, and he deceived them that dwelt on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image should be killed. Mm -hmm. And so what you have happening here, and we've discussed this in our you know, previous uh, studies on Revelation, but what you have happening here is this parallel event um, of an image being set up mm -hmm. and people being uh, commanded to bow down and worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about Daniel chapter 3 that really gives us insight into what's happening in Revelation 15 mm -hmm. is that you have this image of, of a man, right? image of all gold. Now, why didn't Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego bow down? Well, there are two reasons. Number mm -hmm. one is that this image is in direct viol violation to the law of God. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So they're being asked to break the law of God. Right. Commandment number two, thou shalt not bow down to any graven images. Mm -hmm. So this is a command that has mm -hmm. been set up in direct violation to the law of God. And they're like, mm. number one, we're not bound mm -hmm. for that reason. And number two, you could imagine the shock of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they see this image mm -hmm. of all gold. Mm. They're like, what? <laughs> That's not what we told him. <laughs> what? You know, if he had made an image just like the, uh, yeah, just like the image of Daniel too, right. and said, like "Hey this guys, one? this is what God has shown me," mm -hmm. and you know, I'm not actually about that, but whoa, look at yeah. what God showed me. Yeah. But he ends up producing a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. So this image is an image of sin. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a man of sin. Mm -hmm. hmm. And that's exactly what this image actually points us to. Mm -hmm. At the end of time, the man of sin mm -hmm. is going to, you know, is going to be presented as, look, mm -hmm. you need to worship this man of sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know ultimately that um, the ultimate man of sin, if, if you will, mm -hmm. is the counterfeit of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about this scenario just in light of what we're saying, right? Mm -hmm. You're standing there and you're looking at this imposter mm -hmm. who is claiming to be Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. right? We're not talking about, you know, the people that lead up to Christ or the positions that we're talking about Satan himself. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. And everyone is bowing down and saying, this is the promised one. Mm -hmm. This is the millennium has come, the, the time of peace, his kingdom is going to be a kingdom that, that lasts forever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. according to the Bible. And you have people who are standing going, we're not bound. Mm. You know, man, there's a conspiracy against Jesus. Mm. And how, are, you, are you serious? You are not bowing down mm. to Jesus? And so what we see happening in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saying, hey, we're not serving your gods mm -hmm. is going to be a literal reality at some point mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the object lessons, the parallels that we will draw mm -hmm. are crucial. What is it that made them stand mm -hmm. instead of bowing with everyone else? Mm -hmm. that, that's going to be the same thing mm -hmm. that will lead God's people to stand instead of bowing down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Despite what they see, and I just want you to think about that. They're looking at this thing of all gold. Mm -hmm. It has to be one of the most splendid right. images, things mm -hmm. that they have ever seen. Right. I've never seen anything like this, man. I mean, just the sheer mm -hmm. awesomeness of the image, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. whoa, yeah. I just got to bow. Yeah. That's going to be the same thing at the end of time. And the music. Mm. The and the music, music is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they got everything in there. Yep. Everything is yep. going to lead to the, this emotional appeal mm -hmm. yes. that yes. says, mm -hmm. hey, man, this is it. This is what mm -hmm. we've been waiting for. This is the promised one. This is the deliverer. Mm -hmm. And, whoa, let's just... 
let's just bow. And all your senses yeah. Yeah. are drawing you all into, your senses. you know, into that, yeah. that situation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hmm. Ivor was touching on Revelation 13. I think it would be good to connect that with Revelation 14 and the everlasting gospel. Because yeah. the question was asked, mm -hmm. how will we not bow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 14, in contrast to Revelation 13, where the world is following the beast and receiving the mark and bowing to this image, Revelation 14 and verses 6 and 7 call us to the everlasting gospel. Mm -hmm. Maybe can, Yvonne, could you read those two sure. verses for us? Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is, has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. The first message of the everlasting gospel, which is the everlasting good news, is to fear God. Right. And that's what these three guys do. Mm -hmm. Right. And when you fear God, you don't fear man. Yeah. Right. All fear is gone. Right. So they've completely lost all fear of the king. Yeah. They are not afraid at all of right. the king's commandment because they have been filled with the fear of God. Yeah. And so when the king says, didn't you hear what I said? Yeah. They say, well, yeah, but you're going to be thrown in the furry fire. Well, if that's the case, fine. If it's not the case, fine. We're not going to worship your God. And it's really interesting because you think, in your mind, you think, wow, when the decree comes, like when the image pressure comes, when no man can buy or sell, when everything comes down to it, it's going to be hard to make that decision. I'm like, really? I, I understand that it will be hard in the sense that we can't do it. We're not strong enough to do it. But here's the deal. These guys are showing us when your life is on the line, that's no time to compromise your faith in God. Mm. That's right. That's no time yeah. to compromise that's your right. faith that's in true. God. If you're going to compromise your faith, you could do it now, right? Yeah. God will forgive you right here. But when, you, when it comes to the end, right. yeah. that's not the time to compromise. They're like, okay, well, I guess if we're going to die, we're going to die. But if we're going to die, this is not the time to say we don't believe in God anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it's powerful because the reason, the other reason they did not bow is in the second angel's message. Mm. Babylon is fallen. Mm -hmm. mm. Nebuchadnezzar's like, no, Babylon is not fallen. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah. Head of gold. <laughs> the of gold. image said right. that Babylon would fall, so mm -hmm. we can't bow mm -hmm. to a false picture. We mm -hmm. can't bow to something that's not true. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Babylon is going to fall. Mm -hmm. And so you see this connection between first angel's message, second angel's message, mm -hmm. and then the, the third. <laughs> okay, Evan. It's all, it's all right. The third, do the third angel's message, man. What is it? It's a warning of fire. Mm -hmm. And here yes. Nebuchadnezzar yeah. is. Oh, all right, if on. you don't do what I say, mm -hmm. I'm throwing you in fire. Right. Mm -hmm. So which fire are we gonna fear? Mm -hmm. Right. Which yeah. fire are we? Man's fire mm -hmm. or God's fire? Mm -hmm. And then when 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 the form of the fourth yes. Yes. appears in the fire with them, mm -hmm. he's showing them, look, guys, your fire is nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. fear not him that can right. destroy the, mm -hmm. you know, the body, body, but him that can destroy body and soul. Mm -hmm. right. right. And so and this fire. whole picture mm -hmm. of what's happening in Daniel 3 has so much, you know, practical gospel mm -hmm. and end time mm -hmm. uh, Significant. um, significance mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. um, it's important for us to, to, to see it, to mm -hmm. understand it, to mm -hmm. internalize it mm -hmm. so that we're able to do just what they did in that yeah. time. And it's really cool. Go ahead, Ron. No, I was going to say, I, I love the way this is portrayed here because you can see it. Mm -hmm. You can visually mm -hmm. see yeah. what's going on. You can see these guys. You can see, first of all, the king saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not let me just let me just review this for you. Mm -hmm. I told you to worship this mm -hmm. image. I told you to bow down and you're not going to do it. Like I, he just had to kind of mm -hmm. review the situation. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, <laughs> let me just remind you of how dire the situation is. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we don't even need to talk to you about this mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. Like when I read that, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it brings a smile to yeah, your face. Yeah. It's like, and some goosebumps. We, we, it, yes, because we don't even need to discuss it. God, the goosebumps. Yeah. It's non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable. Oh, yeah. right. We don't need to talk about it. I think Nebuchadnezzar was, I think he was most mad at himself. Yeah, he was. For I what? Think, I think he was like, whoa, that's deep. Yeah, yeah they got something <laughs> I don't These have. These guys are yeah. not bowing like, uh -huh. That's powerful. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a yeah. minute. Why am I saying that's powerful? <laughs> 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 I like exactly what you guys right. are doing. Yeah. Get <laughs> and it's making me mad. <laughs> but the other thing was to me, he challenged God. Mm -hmm. 
He said, he said here, and question. who is the God who will deliver you from my hand? In other words, what God is yeah. awesome enough and, to deliver you? What? And the mm -hmm. answer, mm -hmm. the answer <laughs> what? is found in Daniel 12.1. Mm -hmm. Oh, 12, mm -hmm. is Michael he will stands deliver up? Mm -hmm. everyone that is found written in the book, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So again, we know that whatever it is happening mm -hmm. in Daniel 12.1 and 2 mm -hmm. where God delivers, mm -hmm. that's the answer to who's going to deliver you? Mm -hmm. Michael stands up. Mm -hmm. So we know that the events that happened just before Michael stand up, Daniel 11, mm -hmm. 40 to 45, again, mm -hmm. take us right back to what's happening right here, right now, yes. mm -hmm. right? What's happening right here in Daniel 3. These are the events that God is trying to prepare us for to show us, look, these are the things that are going to happen right before Michael stands up. Mm -hmm. But I want you to be faithful because when the devil seeks to throw you into that fiery furnace, mm -hmm. just know that the form of the fourth, the Son of God, which we will read about, you know, mm -hmm. here shortly, mm -hmm. I will be in there with you. With you. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Someone is coming to deliver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's another in the fire. Awesome. When they addressed the king, they said, our God will deliver us. But if he doesn't, mm -hmm. they knew that they, they might end God. up, ha it's up to God. Mm -hmm. They might end up having to go through that fire. But if he doesn't, we're still not going to do it. Our God is still sovereign. Our mm -hmm. God is still good. Mm -hmm. And that we can apply. So I'm getting all excited. Mm -hmm. We can apply mm -hmm. to our lives mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. We're going through something. If it doesn't turn out, you're praying for a loved one who might be dying. Mm -hmm. And if God doesn't, mm -hmm does not spare that person's life. Does, it, it doesn't mean that God is not able or that, what it means is that's what's best. Yes. Even though we don't know we it. And it. that's where the faith comes in. That's where the faith mm -hmm. comes in, the trust. That even if it doesn't turn out the way we asked, mm -hmm. we have to believe that God did it because it was what's best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ultimately we would know later mm -hmm. why he did what he did. Yes. But faith, even if you don't answer mm -hmm. the prayer the way we ask it, Lord, you know what's best. And Very that's important. what he does. Very important. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, think about this, and this is, this is a thought that people will probably struggle with, mm. and Christians will probably struggle with. Mm. Daniel, I mean, uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, if he doesn't deliver us. Mm. And think about the implications of that, mm -hmm. right? If he doesn't deliver us. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't deliver us, is he, is he upset at us? Mm -hmm. um, has he forsaken us? Mm. If he doesn't deliver us, what does this mean for eternal life? Because mm. if we're doing something and if we, there is sin in us that, you know, leads God to say, I'm not even delivering you, mm. then does this mean that, you know, what does this mean for my life after this? Do I have eternal life? Mm -hmm. So in, a, in essence, what they are saying is even if God slayed us himself, Mm. Hmm. Even if this meant we don't get to go on in the future and live an eternal life with God, even if that were the case, we're still not bowing down to serve you. Hmm. Now, now, just follow this, because remember what Moses prayed mm -hmm. when his p p people were rebelling against God? Mm -hmm. And he prayed what? Blot me out. Blot me out. Like Moses, blot me out. It's not, you know, it's not a reference to, you know, kill me. It's a reference to blot me out of the book, book of life. Of life. Ooh. Moses was willing and ready to give up heaven mm. in order to reflect the character of Christ. Mm -hmm. mm. Jesus himself at the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm -hmm. He was willing to die even if it meant him never returning from, uh, you know, from death. Mm. And so think about this. Many of us serve God because we want heaven. Mm. Mm. Lucifer wants heaven too. Mm. Lucifer mm. wants heaven more mm. than many of us, mm. right? Are we serving God for the reward? Mm. I wanna be in heaven, I wanna live forever. Mm. Or are we willing to serve God to such a degree mm -hmm. that even if he slew us, mm -hmm. we would still be willing to do what was right because mm. it is right, mm -hmm. because that's what God wants. Mm. Because mm. The, the bottom line is none of us deserve heaven. Mm -hmm. That's right. If God came back and was like, none of you are going to heaven, mm -hmm. he would be just in doing that. Right. Because all have sinned right. and fallen short of the glory of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So we have to become so dead to self mm -hmm. that we are, e we are willing to even pray that prayer, Lord, if it serves the best for your purpose, mm -hmm. blot me out. 
Mm. So a verse in the New Ooh. Testament, book of Revelation, connects with this, and that's Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11. They love not their lives even under the death. Mm. Yes. So it's not about them anymore. Yeah. And this is where they turn the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is where they turn the corner. They're like, well, we're not going to worship that image. Nebuchadnezzar comes. Is it true? Um, you're not going to. Let me just reiterate um, if you don't worship, you're going in the furnace. And who is that God that's going to deliver you? Mm -hmm. Did you hear what the. Did you hear what the king just said? Who is that God that's. <laughs> they just turned the corner right yeah. there. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. challenged our God. Yeah. You didn't challenge our faith. Right. Mm -hmm. You just challenged our oh, God. God. We're not moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's over. Our God is so good. Yeah. We don't. It's not about us anymore. Yeah. We don't care what happens to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Life, death, eternal yeah. life. We don't yeah. care anymore. You just challenged our God. Mm -hmm. right. And so phew, we're done right yeah. now. We're done. Yeah. And that's the way, that's where God is bringing us to. You know, we're in this place right now in our Christian experience where we get challenged and we take it personally. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's about us. But we're going to make a shift. Mm -hmm. And when we make that shift, then it doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Right now we're still in, and Jesus was always on that level. He was always at that, my father, my father, my father, my father, my father. They question him, well, my father, I'm reflecting, I'm doing what my father, so everything you're saying, how does that relate to my father? That's where he was all the time. Mm -hmm. We're like, sometimes we're there and then sometimes we're not. Mm -hmm. Like me, God, me, God, me, 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 God, me, me, God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're back in the Yeah, world, yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's so powerful about this is the book of Revelation is just prophecy, 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 message, 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 message. And we don't know the practical stuff. Right. But when we say Revelation 14, everlasting gospel, fear God, then we go back to Danny, we're like, oh, that's what it looks like. Yeah. That's what fear God is. Yeah. Oh, got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what I love about Daniel. Yes. Mm. Daniel fills in all that I relational, love that too. practical mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Makes it real. Like, yeah. oh, that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. and it's going to get more intense now. We need to read these next verses. Mm -hmm. Unless you got some more thoughts here. You can always throw them in. But let's read now. Um, Jason, can you read for us verses 19 all the way down to verse... 26. Okay. Then Nebuchadnezzar 27. Was, okay. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Hmm. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army uh, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace uh, exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the, into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his uh, counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Hmm. They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, hmm. and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. Yeah. The hair of their head was not singed, uh, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Mm. Wow. Mm. Not even the smell not even of the smoke. Smell. Yeah. Yeah. Not even the smell of smoke. And they That's were amazing. fully fully dressed, their turbans mm -hmm. and everything. They yeah. didn't even take and off all the stuff. They were in flammable attire. <laughs> yeah, they were flammable attire. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a powerful thing. There was one thing that was burned in the fire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. That what was, was the, the rope that bound them. Yep. Mm. Oh, that's that was right. A rope that bound them. Mm -hmm. well, let me take that off you guys while you're in here. Mm -hmm. wow. Sometimes we, when we are going through fire, mm -hmm. we think, oh man, this fire is going to consume me. And what God is, what God is doing is trying to 
destroy the rope that binds us. Mm -hmm. mm. And that's just one of the things oh, that good. really jumped out in this story. Mm -hmm. Is like, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. They bind them, throw them in there, mm -hmm. fire gets rid of that which bounds them. And that's what the fire of God does. Yes. Yes. The fire of God is designed to destroy the things that bind us. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So Satan wants to bind us up and throw us into this trial. <laughs> yeah. And God wants to release those things that bind us yeah. and give us freedom in the trial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of my favorite verses is Isaiah 43, mm -hmm. verses 1 through 3. Fear mm -hmm. not, for I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You're mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you, and through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, mm -hmm. you will not be burned, neither will the flame kindle upon you, mm -hmm. for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your yeah. Savior. That's what happened here. Mm -hmm. they, went, they were in the mm -hmm. fire, mm -hmm. and they were not burned. And we go through, uh, this verse is like layers of trials. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you go through the waters, mm -hmm. I got you. When you go through a worst trial, the rivers, mm -hmm. I'm still there. Mm -hmm. And when you go through the absolute worst mm -hmm. in your life, mm -hmm. you won't be burned. Mm -hmm. Because, and neither will the flame, and one of the versions uh, says scorch you, mm -hmm. but neither will it kindle upon you. You will not be burned. I've got you. I've called you by your name. Yeah. What verse is that? Your mind. Isaiah 43. Isaiah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isaiah. Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah. Ah. Wrote to That's prepare right. the way mm. for the captivity. That's yeah. right. Mm. So you can imagine these three guys are like, remember that promise in Isaiah? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The one that Yvonne really likes? Yeah. <laughs> that promise. We need to hold on to that promise right now. You know, one of the things yeah. that I really love about this is the fact that Jesus could have sent anybody. He could have sent an angel. Mm. He could have oh, sent that's good, anybody. Jay. But he said, no, I'm going to personally yes. show up and, the, and stand with them and deliver them from this. Mm -hmm. oh, I personally love coming down yeah. to be with my people that are going through this trial. It shows that he feels what we're feeling, that he goes through what we're going through, and that no matter what we're experiencing, he's always there with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. I love that. That's good. That's a powerful that's a good thought. Word. So Nebuchadnezzar, as we get into this part of the story, Nebuchadnezzar is super angry, and we're super out of time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The glasses go on and they Boom. come off. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we'll pick this up, but we just want to touch on a couple more things yeah. here as we go through this. Yeah.